As we open the door to mystery and suspense, we see a light at the end of the hallway. A steady thump is not an unseen entity in the walls. It is your own heart beating. Come further and be enveloped in the light of Schlock Shock Radio. For every ray of light, there is a point where it must succumb to the darkness. It must pierce into the black nothingness and either come out the other end triumphant or let itself rest eternally in the void. For one man, his light has reached this dusk and his struggle to stand out of the shadow will be the key to his very survival. But something is on hold for him in the chasm of fears. Something called the Marmor. I couldn't see a thing. I could feel my eyes blinking, but I could not see. Blind. No other possibility. But how? I remember eating. Had I been poisoned? I didn't feel sick. I didn't feel anything, not at first. And then my leg... God, it hurts. Was something biting it? If only I could look down and examine the leg. What was causing that? My leg must be crushed. Or being crushed. What the hell is happening to my leg? I must have been in an accident. Wait, I was starting to remember. I was eating at a restaurant. Why? The date. I was on a date. She was beautiful. But, ah, uh, I couldn't remember her face. Then, I see a light. Not in the memory, but right at that waking moment. A light coming closer. A flashlight? No, too big. A shaft of light piercing the dark. Slicing through it like a blade. You know what that meant? I could see! Then, I could hear. But where was I? I tried to yell, help! But the sound stopped in my throat. Too dry. The helicopter faded into the distance, and new noises arose. I could still see, which was good, but it was obviously nighttime. As the helicopter trailed away, I could see the silhouettes of trees superimposed between myself and and the beam of light thrusting outward from the nose of the vehicle, like a knight's jousting lance, poking into the foliage for the heart of its opponent. It was not apparent at first how important that helicopter would come to be for me. In fact, it had not yet dawned on me that perhaps that helicopter may be searching for me. Right then, all I could focus on was the pain. It had never subsided, but the less I moved, the less it hurt. It was too dark to see anything, but I thought that if maybe I could sit up, I could feel around. Then a horrible thought hit me. Maybe my leg wasn't there. Maybe it was a phantom pain. Maybe I lost it, and where was once my ankle now only a horribly mangled stump, oozing out that viscous sap that was supposed to be inside of me. Please, God, I yelled. Please let me still have my leg! I sat up sharply and the pain roared to life. Then, ah! something made a sick sound inside my leg in sheer pain, fear, and exhaustion enveloped me into a dark shade. I dreamt of monsters. I awoke the next morning feeling sick. I turned to my side and wretched. <laughs> But nothing came out. 
I continued dry heaving for a moment and laid down on my back, so thirsty. Sure, I was hungry too, but the thirst, I was so thirsty. My throat felt like I had spent all night swallowing gravel. I looked up to the heavens and saw blue peeking through the green. So much green. The light shone through, but barely. I might as well have been in the African rainforest. I knew I wasn't, but the scenery definitely fit the bill. I gathered my courage and slowly, ever so slowly, sat up. My leg was still there, or so I assumed. A large tree trunk lay on top of it, and I realized that it was most definitely crushed, perhaps beyond any repair. Then I saw it, over the fallen tree. My truck! But it looked like... What did it look like? The Titanic? Yeah, the Titanic with its propellers out of the water and up in the air. A truck's rear is not supposed to resemble the Titanic, but it did right down to the water? I looked left and right and the picture became less muddled. The shallow creek, no, it was bigger than that. A river, but with such little water, ran right in front of me. I was back a little and not on its beach, if you can call it that, but I was lying a couple yards into the trees, a tree trunk replacing my leg, a river in front of me and my little truck with its face in the bed and its butt to the sky. I wanted a drink so bad. I looked around for a puddle or something, but nothing at all. In fact, the forest looked wrong. Everything was so dry. Twigs and leaves lay about me, but they were gray and brown. Not supposed to look like that at this time of year. Everything was wrong. Tree trunks are not supposed to trap people. Trucks are not supposed to be upright like that. The river looks wrong. Why was it so shallow? Why couldn't it be closer so I could have a drink? Screw beaver fever. I needed water, no matter how many animals would be using it as their commode. I lay back down to catch my breath. The pain was there, but not as bad as the night before. That snapping I heard? Obviously a bone breaking. It cannot be good that a bone breaking would signal a decrease in pain. Maybe if I were rescued, the foot could be saved. Rescued? The helicopter? I looked around and saw nothing. Help! Help me! Please, anybody help me! Silence. Nothing more. It was so quiet. I may have disturbed a nearby cardinal or blue jay, but nothing more. I couldn't really twist much at my waist anyway because of my leg's position, but I did try. The pain came in a wave but I could manage. A foot is not supposed to feel this good when it's replaced by a tree. Instead of twisting my body, I simply turned my head, and that's when I saw him. Immediately, I remembered. You're okay! Can you climb out of the vehicle? We have a human chain going! Hold on to my hand, we'll pull you out! I won't let go! All this water? Don't think about that! Just hold on! Go ahead and climb out of your vehicle's window! He promised he wouldn't let go. And he didn't. When the floating tree hit him, he was ripped from the hands of the other firefighters, but held tightly onto mine. We were immediately pulled from the truck, and then... I awoke to the helicopter. At that moment, I lay looking at the firefighter's face. He looked... peaceful, at rest... Maybe sleeping? No, of course he wasn't. He was dead. Just like I should have been. No, I should have been rescued. Not rushed downstream. If not for the damned tree, pinned to the floor like a trapped mouse. At least a mouse has given their last supper before their execution by metal bar and spring. I lay cold, damp, hungry, in pain, and worst, thirsty so thirsty. My body wasn't ready yet for all the movement, and I could feel the dark slowly clouding my vision. Like standing up too fast, my brain became fuzzy, and I could feel sleep take me. As my head lulled back to face the firefighter, 
I could have sworn that I saw his arm twitch, ever so slightly. Then, I dreamt. I dreamt again of monsters. A horrible thing. A bomber. Its breath all over me. It nudged me as I lay, and then opened its great maw. I saw rows of fangs, like a shark. It breathed in one last time and closed those fangs on my face. Maybe it wasn't a dream. I awoke to find my face very much intact, but the haunting image of the creature would not escape my mind. Why did I think it was a mommer? There's no such thing as one. When I was younger, my grandfather had a very large barn behind his house, and as a kid, I loved to try and get inside of it. What kid doesn't want to crawl around in a dusty old wooden barn? complete with nails waiting to sink their teeth deeply into a palm or heel. It was a mysterious place that I could only view from the outside because my grandfather kept it locked tight. I remember he caught me peeking in once. Little boys can't go into that barn. Of course, being only about six years old, I asked the one question which adults always seem to have an answer for, but never seemed prepared to give an answer to at the time. Why? A barn is dangerous. There are all kinds of horrible things in there that can hurt a kid. Horrible things like... the mama. He obviously realized that anything of this rational world he told me would only interest me further. Instead, he went the route of supernatural. He was a smart man, and knew that my imagination was more dangerous. A mama lives in the barn and eats little children. He's a big scary monster with long arms and the smells so bad it kills horses in one whiff. He's big, angry, and he's always looking to gobble nosy boys up. Don't go in this barn. He'll get you and swallow you up in one slip. Even though I was six, and should have been absolutely terrified of these images my grandfather was conjuring up, I just humored him and told him that I would never go in the barn. I was pretty smart for my age, and should have asked him why it didn't try to eat him when he went in there. But I let the issue drop. Of course, I tried to go in anyway. But that's when I saw it. The mommer, as it turned out, was real. I woke up in the woods and realized that I must have fallen back to sleep. I was thinking about my grandfather and dozed off. Did I doze off? Part of me felt like I was there. Suddenly I woke up and then I was in that barn. No, I must have fallen back to sleep. The pain in my throat was increasing, and I felt so weak. Then, I heard it. I turned my head to the firefighter and thought I saw movement. He was dead, of course. Wasn't he? Oh my god, he's moving. He's alive! Hey! Hey, I'm right here! Are you okay? And then, it appeared. It... It was the mommer. The beast was horrible. It was eating the firefighter. It picked up the dead man in its jaws and shook him back and forth. Pieces of the man flew everywhere. Something heavy landed near me. The mommer dropped the man, stared at me for a moment, and seemed to smile. The damn thing actually seemed to smile. Then sank its teeth once more in the man's flesh and dragged him into the woods. Silence. Frozen in fear, I could do nothing but sleep. I awoke feeling really sick. My head rang with the sounds of the helicopter, but I don't remember actually hearing it. Maybe it came by the previous night. The images resurfaced of the terrible beast looking over at me from above the dead firefighter's body. So much shock and horror I felt because of that thing. I couldn't get myself up. I couldn't even call out. I felt like I was dying. In fact, I think I was dying. I gathered up all my courage and turned my head towards where the firefighter used to be. My vision was blocked by something on the ground. 
My sight was fuzzy and I would never tell what this object was without lifting my head up. I held my breath and slowly lifted my head. My elbows went behind my back and I was able to prop myself up high enough to see what it was. Then I saw it. I cried in laughter. <laughs> what lie before me was a hatchet. A fireman's hatchet. When the mommer had the man in its teeth and shook him about, the hatchet must have flung off his body and landed next to me. I brought it to me and took a long look at it. This was a nice instrument. It reminded me of a climbing axe, but was definitely a hatchet. It wasn't loose. It was inside a black mesh pouch that must have been attached to a belt. I held onto the hatchet in its pouch like I would hold a baby. I noticed that something was inside one of the pouch's pockets. I fumbled at the strap and opened it. I reached inside and found something metal. I took it out. A lighter! A metal lighter! There is no way that it could possibly work. I flicked the little wheel. It worked! I had fire! But what did that mean? I now had access to fire and an axe. But what could I do with them? For starters, I obviously could start whittling down this log. But how long would that take? It was a whole tree trunk. How else could I escape? No, I could never do that. That's just moronic. I could never lop off my own leg. Of course, I've heard of people doing it before. I could hack off my leg, somehow cauterize the stump using the lighter, and then limp to safety? Where was safety? Would I even be able to get a fire started after hacking off my foot? I doubt I would even be conscious to do that. I'd most likely just pass out and bleed to death. Then, the mommer would come. He'd smell the blood and finish me off. No, I'm not going to hack off my leg. What do I do? I yelled. Then, the helicopter. I heard it. It was searching for me again. If I could just signal it. Fire. I could light a huge fire. But I had to remember where I was. I was in the woods. Though I was near the river, I was still in the woods. I was surrounded by dead leaves, branches, and other flammable things. If I light a big fire, I would most likely go up with it. That would stop my worries real quick. Think! I yelled, think! I looked around for any clues, and then it hit me. I need the fire to be seen by a helicopter. That could only happen at night anyways. If I made a smaller fire at night, maybe they'll see me. During the day, they might see the smoke, but that wasn't a sure bet. But at night, if they can't land, at least they'll send someone to investigate. No need to chop off legs or burn myself to death. Just make fires at night and wait for rescue. But the mommer, would it come back that night? Was it afraid of fire? How did I even know that it was a mommer anyways? Mommers aren't real. What I saw in the barn was nothing more than a bundle of blankets. Nothing more. Mommer was just a scary word for monster. Just something my grandfather made up. They don't exist. <laughs> this one does. No, there's no such thing. You saw it last night. It was large and hairy. The fireman was here one night, and then he was gone. What? Did he just get up and leave without you? I don't know. He just thought on a whim to throw his bloody clothes and intestines all over the woods before he left? <laughs> no. Mommers are real. And there is one here waiting for you. He'll come back tonight and chomp on you just like our grandfather warned he would. Mommers aren't real! I yelled out to no one. I was tired. So thirsty and tired. I lay there thinking about the horrors in my new world and fell asleep with a plan to make a fire when the helicopter came again. It was here, walking the perimeter of where I lie. Does it know that I have an axe? Does it know that I can harm it? Does it think I'm the fireman? Does it think I'm already dead? Hey! I'm still alive, damn it! I have an axe, come any closer and I'll kill you! I said stop. It doesn't understand you. Shut up. 
Yes, it does. It understands me just fine. The mommer is going to kill you. It tasted the firefighter. He was dead, but you, you're fresh. Shut up! I suddenly awoke and it was still night. Did I dream that the mommer was so close? I was so thirsty, and I was feeling better. Why was I feeling better? Why? Because I was close to death. This was the calm before. I hear it! I hear the helicopter! I shot up, ignoring any pain, and took out the lighter. I would use the flame to scan around for nearby twigs and then quickly gather them into a campfire. I opened the top of the lighter and clicked the wheel. It was right in front of me, its mouth wide open and preparing to close in on me. The flame startled it. The mommer quickly lifted its head to get away from the small flame, and before it could come in again, I thrust the lighter directly into its oily black coat of fur. It was now on fire. The damn thing was alight. I quickly grabbed the axe with my burnt hands and slammed the blade into the side of the thing. Die! Die! It fell over with the axe still buried into its side. Its scorched flesh leaving a putrid odor in the air. Completely exhausted, I lay back down. It was dying, laying right next to me, right next to my own crushed and burned body. I was dying too. As I lay now, reflecting on what has led me to this purgatory, I think of all the things I once loved in my life, but I can't seem to remember anymore. That damned mommer took everything from me. I suppose that it is not beyond the realm of possibility that it had somehow caused the flood that brought me here. Maybe I was a bad person and deserved all this. Maybe I didn't care enough about other people. I honestly don't know. Now, I lie here next to the burned remains of the beast. I don't know how many days have passed. I still hear the helicopter sometimes, but it doesn't matter anymore. I'm dying. But at least I can remember that I did one thing right in my life. I took the damn thing with me. Good evening. This is News at 12. Authorities today have announced they've recovered the body of Harper Township resident David Jeegan who washed down the King River in last spring's flash flood. Until now, no evidence of his vehicle or body was recovered after the horrific event. The flood also claimed the life of firefighter Lieutenant Angelo Flubin, with his body still not recovered. The body of David Jeegan was discovered two miles west of the Patrick Feeney Army National Guard. Half buried under a fallen tree trunk, authorities stated that along with his body, evidence of the man's vehicle was partially unearthed and the guard is aiding in excavating the area to find the remains of the vehicle and possibly the body of Angelo Flumen. We'll have more in our evening report as the story develops. In other news, someone is supposedly killing livestock in nearby farms. We spoke to Joel Pritchett about the bizarre story. The Mama! With characters and situations created by Stephen Snowden. The Mama starred Stephen Snowden as David, Nathan Pensonalt as Angelo, Scott Gliney as the grandfather, and Chris Jarowski as the news anchor. Music by Stephen Snowden, The Mama is a production of Schlock Shock Radio, copyright 2013. This is Sean P. Metty. Until next time, stay out of the dark.